Nice, and we'll get a Spear Goblin shot off on the Countess, and that'll drop the Countess super early, as well as able to pull the E-Wiz. Now, our Countess gets to get to the back line, take down the E-Wiz, and it's just, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's an absolute demolical! Hey, yo, it's your boy Tommy coming at you with a brand new Clash Mini video, and today, we're gonna be having a look at the best Countess deck to be running in the game as you guys can see i have been playing ranked and i am currently on a seven win streak as far as my rank goes i am sitting at 327 trophies i just wish there was a way to get some more challenge coins because i feel like i want to i want to grind you know what i'm saying and, I, and they used to have unlimited challenge coins is what i heard in the past but now you can only get like five a day which is rough but it is what it is anyways let's focus on the task at hand so recently the countess did just get buffed and now she's really really good she gets her ability so quickly she gets off that bloodthirst and she is just all over the battlefield doing so much damage i've been tweaking this deck working around with it all last night and this is what i've come down to obviously the main card in the deck is the countess now the one card that you could trade out that i've been like working in and out of is the giant skeleton but i just find so much value in the giant skeleton i've tried the pekka i don't have the mega knight unlocked i wish i did to put it to the test but i feel like the giant skeleton being three elixir having the bomb drop ability getting all those people in that massive area weak and low is just absolutely insane and after you get the giant skeleton to two stars he also you know covers a wider area like a massive massive area which is pretty lit and i feel like the goal of this deck is to get as many opponents weak as many minis weak as possible so that your countess can now go around the map deal bunch of a bunch of damage and just start killing minis left right and center now the two backline cards will actually have three here we have the spear goblin um we have the magic archer and we have the bowler i like to play these guys in a sort of zone tactic right so the bowler is obviously really good because at the start of the game he bowls down the lane he can knock back stun whatever it takes and no matter who you hit it's going to affect the battle greatly especially if you get multiple people in a row it's just something insane with the bowler and the bowler did just get fixed as well with that one star ability which is nice and then next we have the the spear goblin obviously this guy is a problem if you end up landing a nice spear goblin throw on one of their important targets early in the game you could even kill them in one shot but if not you get them low enough to the point where if the countess decides to slide on them she's going to do a lot of damage and she's going to kill them pretty much instantly after that, we have the Magic Archer. I tried the E-Wiz, but I feel like in this specific deck, the Magic Archer's consistent damage is a lot better than the E-Wiz stun. So the Magic Archer also, you know, hits through multiple different targets. And so if, if you look at that, that's four different, in a way, four different uh, troops that just do, deal a lot of damage, three of which do AoE. And then I actually have the Guard in here. And the reason why I have the Guard is two Elixir card, right? I, I feel like this is a very Elixir balanced deck. We have two, three Elixirs, two two elixirs and a four elixir usually what i like to do uh as an overall deck but the guard stays alive one of the main things with the countess is you need at least another card to be able to stay alive during the fight to buy your countess enough time to go around the map and kill everyone once the guard pops his ability gets all that extra shield the guard becomes a menace to society so one of my main strats well, we'll talk about it more as we hop into the game let's just hop into the game and i'll talk strats and show you guys exactly why i'm on the seven win streak and how to play this deck all right, so we're going up against another Countess, which is fine. Ideally, I don't like starting Giant Skeleton in the starting hand, but at the same time, I kind of do like being tanky early game, especially against another Countess. Against any other deck, I wouldn't do it. Let's try to go... Spear Goblin is wild, but... Oh, nice, we get a hit on the Countess, so maybe not too wild. So he gets a hit on our Countess as well. We should be able to kill his... No, they both TP. Giant Skeleton Death Damage comes in hot, and against a Mega Knight 1v1, I believe we win that pretty easily, even with the ability. It's not really... It's nothing to, to worry too much about. That's just gonna be Giant Skeleton going down here. Or, I'm sorry, Mega Knight going down. Love to see that. Round 2. Mm, we'll get them both out. I don't have the Bowler out yet. I like to usually combo early with the Bowler, but this is cool. I like to put the the guard any cards that don't have like such squishy hp i like to put in the back even if they are a melee troop just so that when the countess does teleport oh if i had the bowler oh do that again that next time he does that again i'm bowling i'm bowling him 
he's gonna just die. So Giant Skeleton's gonna get massive death damage there. Magic Archer's just getting so much value in the back. And still doesn't get teleported on, which is why I love, I love putting them back there. Look at that. He should be able to kill the Countess. And he's stronger than the e once he gets the ability off. She wins that there. Magic Archer, this damage able to go through all the targets. Just really, really strong. And we haven't even had Bowler yet. So I'm going to see if he does that again. I'm just going to go for that read. He has to do that again. There's no way he does it. Now, I could go for, for Magic Archer damage plus one. I might do it just because he, he wasn't able to get to the Magic Archer last round. But a lot of times, I do like to focus on my Giant Skeleton. So I'm not going to work out. Like, he, Magic Archer has good damage. Just focus on the Giant Skeleton. This is usually my strategy. Giant Skeleton buffed up as fast as possible. And he does stack them all down the middle again. So that's going to be a triple bowl. And the Magic Archer being in the back right is going to get so much see-through value. One more shot would be nice. There we go. My Countess teleports to the back. It's the Wizard down weak. And we still have three troops up. And that's going to be a very quick 3-0 sweep. Perfect example of how to play this deck right there. All right, into game number two against Big Cheesy, another Countess. Like, I've just been running into the Countess because she's, you know, far, just the best character in the game right now. Best character in the game. So, I could, if I place him here, some of these does, I, I'm just going Giant Skeleton in the beginning. I can't, I can't risk playing the Magic Archer. It's just too, in my opinion, too big of an investment early game. And I think this is actually the right play because we get the Spear Goblin shot off on the Countess because obviously she's going to play Countess on the healing spot, right? So we still have Giant Skeleton up and we still have our Countess up, which is nice. Boom. So Giant Skeleton early actually has worked out for us. So here we go, Countess on the heal spot. And I expect him to do that again, to be honest. But I'm looking for the Bowler here and then the Magic Archer. Because if he plays any... I could potentially... We'll go back line. I could double down on whatever this is. I'm going to go for a risky double down play. See if he bites. He goes Giant Skeleton there. So either way, we get the like the Giant Skeleton extremely weak. And he's going to get no value because he was pushed back too. Magic Archer is getting a lot of damage off in the back as well. Bowler and Spear Goblin are going to turn around and kill the Countess. And now that's just going to be E was in the back corner. And that's that'll be an easy cleanup. No problem. No problem. All this, we still have our guards in the back pocket. You know, we'll put the counters back on the heel spot. Now, I, I believe he won't place anything of major use back there. So I'm actually going to go here with this. I'm going to increase. We're going to level up our spirit goblin because I've tried to level up a guard too. I like to try to do that early. The spirit goblin has very, 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 very low health. Nice, and we'll get a Spear Goblin shot off on the Countess, and that'll drop the Countess super early, as well as able to pull the E-Wiz. Now, our Countess gets to get to the back line, take down the E-Wiz, and it's just, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's an absolute demolical! Uh, he's he's going to fall there. It's just too simple with this deck, bro. And another Countess. I'm trying to get, like, another, I've been trying to get <laughs> a different character to go up against, but this is the only one that everybody's playing right now because she's so strong. Which is fair. You know, I'm not going to change it up. It's been working this whole time. We'll, we'll run. I just messed up. Oops. We'll run our Spear Goblin in the middle. And we'll start the Giant Skeleton. And that's going to be a lot of starting damage. And in a way, I messed up still. Because I meant to put... What's it called? The <laughs> I Fat Finger. So he's going to win this first try. That's fine. That's fine. That's a fat finger. Let's give him the lead. At least make it interesting against another Countess. I meant to put my Countess in the front for the heal. You want the Giant Skeleton dead. But that was uh, just a fat finger misplay on my part. All good. Um, I'd like to get a bowler down if possible. I will even cycle to get that down. And I don't get it. That's sad. Okay. Um, uh, Let's go Sphere Goblin. I thought he wouldn't go for that predictable play after seeing my Spirit Goblin, but he does anyways. Giant Skeleton's going to get a lot of value. Also, even with the Fat Finger, and even with no prediction on our Spirit Goblin's part, we're still able to absolutely hammer this Countess into the ground. No Bowler, too. The Bowler would have been crazy. So now let's let's try the Spider Formation. If we get, we, There's no way we don't get Bowler here, right? Well, I mean, we'll go Giant Skeleton. And Bowler, there we go. So this is this this is the spider formation I was talking about. Whoever's in the middle here, I like to keep them in the middle because you get a lot of value with the magic archer. You get a lot of value with the spear goblin attacking it first, and then you get the bowler 
to hit whoever's in the back right. It's just a lot of cross damage, right? And yeah, I don't get any... Oh, the P.E.K.K.A. actually takes the Spear Goblin. And there's the cross damage coming in hot from the Magic Archer. Our bomber goes down, but that's going to do a lot of damage to his bomber. And it's just a massacre! It's a massacre! He's going to go down! Let's go, man. 2-1 up. Alright. And I'm going to continue to play my boy in the middle. We, I, I, we can switch this up, though, right? Go a little bit like this. And I might even double stack. Just be annoying, right? Let's, let's see if we can be annoying with the double stack here. And Magic Archer. I like the damage. Wait, no. We got to focus on our Giant Skeleton. Giant Skeleton is the most important troop in this in this deck. We need that massive AoE. Oh, yeah. We're going to just... <laughs> we're just going to take the counters down right away. And there's the Super Bomb damage that cannot be stopped. It just cannot be stopped. We'll be seeing ya. <laughs> We'll be seeing you, bro. Let's see if we can get one more. No, it's literally just Countess. It's just Countess Royale now, right? It's the only card everybody's using, which is fair enough. He's that, he's that good. He really is. And we're playing on a map where there's no predict. So we're just going to go Giant Skeleton up front. And I'm just going to... We'll just play him. We'll play him. We'll play the Spear Goblin. It's fine. This Countess is going to get hammered early on. So we'll be seeing you now. It's just against a P.E.K.K.A. That's easy money. Pekka's going down here. Um, I'm down to go Magic Archer. We already know what he has now. We'll go Magic Archer here. He's not going to play these guys in the middle. Try to get the bowler. Nice. Let's run our formation, actually. This is the formation right here. A little triangle formation. Someone's getting value. And it's going to be the Magic Archer getting the straight line value on the right lane. Right? Even if they don't play up where I want them to, they're going to get value somewhere. Count is going to go up. Giant Skeleton is going to take down <laughs> the P.E.K.K.A. And just so much value with the Magic Archer there. Match point. I like to get my guard down here if I can. A little guard. Giant Skeleton. And we'll just switch these two. We'll switch these two. I might even play him up one tile. And play him like this. We'll trap. We'll go with a little bit of a trap formation here. Just so if he does minor. Okay, minor's right side, so it doesn't even matter. But it's all good. His Giant Skeleton's gonna go down mad early. Our Countess should get the TP off for the heal. And he's just left with the P.E.K.K.A. I mean, it's just, this is the deck. This is the deck! I'm telling you guys this, man. I'm telling you guys this information. So that's gonna be it for today's Countess deck video. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comment section down below. Let me know what you're gonna either use or what you're gonna change in this deck to help it fit your play style. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and hope you're going to enjoy the rest of your day.